Welcome back to Face the Nation. I'm Nora O'Donnell. Bob is off. Earlier, I sat down with former Republican Senator and 2012 presidential candidate Rick Santorum. Senator, good to have you here. Thank you, Nora. Let's talk about the debate that's been going on in Indiana and Arkansas. First, Indiana. Was it right for Governor Pence um, to change the language in the bill? Uh, I was hoping he wouldn't. I think that uh, the language that he had is, uh, is better language. This is acceptable language. I voted for this language, so I certainly can't say that it's, it's a bad bill. It's, it's a good bill. But it doesn't do a lot of the things. It doesn't really open the debate up on, on some of the more current issues. I think the, the current language that, uh, that the federal law is, and now Indiana is, has been held pretty much to have a pretty limited view of what religious liberty, li religious freedom is in the, in the workplace. And I think we need to look at as religious liberty is now being pushed harder uh, to provide more religious protections, and that, and that bill doesn't do that. What now do you think with this new language changes? I think what we need to look at is we, we aren't for discrimination of for, against any person. I mean, I think that's no business should uh, discriminate against but be, because of who you are. But it should have the ability to say we're not going to participate in certain activities that we disagree with from a religious point of view. I don't think, frankly, either bill does that, but the second one, the one that uh, Governor Pence backed away from, moves toward that. In fact, here's what the language says. It makes clear that it, the law does not allow businesses to refuse services, facilities, use of public accommodations, goods, employment, or housing to any member or members of the general public based on race, color, religion, ancestry, age, national origin, disability, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, or United States military service. With this language, if you were a wedding planner mm -hmm. and you did not want to be involved in planning a same-sex marriage, this language would not allow you to opt out. I'm not a legal scholar, but I, I can tell you the way that the previous laws have been uh, ruled, that they, they have not provided any type of legal protection for that. And I think that's... And you think that wedding planners who don't want to plan a same-sex marriage should be Again, it's to. a matter. It's a matter of accommodation. I, I, tolerance is a two-way street. If if you're a, if you're a a, um, uh, a print shop, and you you are a, a gay man, should you be forced to print? Uh, God hates fags for the Westboro Baptist Church because they hold those signs up. Should you be forced to do? Should the government? And this is really the case here. Should the government force you to do that? And that's what these cases are all about. This is about the government coming in and saying, no, we're going to make you do this. And this is where I think we just need some space to say, let's have some tolerance have be a two-way street. Do you think that what's behind many of these religious freedom laws is that gay marriage is now legal in more than 30 states? And so this is really about trying to protect business owners who don't want to be involved in same-sex weddings? I think you're seeing, obviously, attitudes in this country change. And when those attitudes change, we run into a whole bunch of new issues. And so the question is, how do we deal with that and respecting people on both sides of the issues? And I think that's where you have to differentiate between discrimination against the person because of who they are and discrimination, not even just unwillingness to participate in actions because they're, they're, they're inconsistent with your, uh, with your religious beliefs.